Hi, I'm Sally Kirkman from sallykirkman.com and I'm here today with Christina Rodenbeck, the Oxford astrologer from oxfordastrologer.com and together we're Astrology Talk podcast. And today we're doing a short podcast which is part of our series called Astrology Talk Investigates. And this uh, question for this episode is going to be, what is a cosmic marriage? Ooh, doesn't it sound exciting, Christina? What is a cosmic marriage? Yeah, and don't we all wish we had one? Well, you find out you don't, by the way, necessarily want a cosmic marriage. Um, uh, a cosmic marriage is a really simple astrological thing, isn't it? Which is uh, one person's sun and another person's moon are either on the same degree or within, uh, you know, a five degree orb, uh, the closer the better, obviously. And, you know, traditionally it was the man's sun and the woman's moon. But I think we can just skip right over that and say, either way, it's a cause of marriage, right? Um, and it's uh, pretty uncommon. I have seen it in a lot of, uh, not a lot, but in some married couples and does not predict necessarily a happy marriage, but it is a combined, it's, it does show sometimes people who just cannot unglom from each other. They cannot live without one another, maybe. That kind of vibe, isn't it, with um, a cosmic marriage? And, and, you know, if the sun and moon are at the same place in the zodiac, then perhaps there is some kind of understanding of how the other person works or something like that i mean it's you know maybe maybe there is a a deep inner understanding with it but we're going to look at a couple of examples to try and flesh this out for you and there's a classic example um and for those of you who are a little bit older you'll remember who these people are we're going to look first of all at two great actors back in the day, Richard Burton, Elizabeth Taylor. They're both very, very popular, charismatic actors. Um, and they were together, they were in uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Uh, they were in Cleopatra first. That's that's where they met. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They met at, on the set of Cleopatra. And Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? It's quite a tempest tempestuous story about a marriage that's actually falling apart a bit. And for those of you who don't know what happened with Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, I mean, they they got married, then they got divorced, then they got married again, then they got divorced. <laughs> I mean, it really was, it was kind of, you know, their, their personal life seemed to mirror what was going on, particularly in that Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. It was tempestuous and everybody wanted to know more about this couple because they were just seen as this kind of wild and crazy love affair can't live with you can't live without you there was a feeling of great excess about them like excessive love excessive drinking excessive she had sort of huge bits of jewelry that he would give her and when they first got together on cleopatra it was a massive scandal because they were both with other people um and they were shooting this ridiculous movie in rome i think it's still one of the most expensive movies ever made um in rome and being pursued by the paparazzi around Rome as they had this, you know, in cafes. So it was all very kind of of its time. And then Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf is a, it's one of, it's a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, it's a great movie, um, which is about alcoholism, actually, partly both par partners drink too much. Um, but that's about much later on down a marriage and it is maybe a reflection of them because they were terrible drinkers both of them had huge alcohol problems and i think you can see all of those things in these charts but the cosmic marriage is in scorpio and i think that that is profound isn't it it's a prof it's a um so we have the chart here of uh, richard burton in the center and elizabeth taylor around the outside and her moon is exactly on his sun. Yeah. So he's a sun Scorpio. She's moon Scorpio. Richard Burton's sun is at 17 Scorpio. Her moon is at 15 Scorpio. So you can see straight away. And this is, you know, what's a cosmic marriage? Also, look what signs 
the sun and moon are in. in in scorpio it's a great passion it's also quite tortured as well um you know it's that flip side of scorpio too um and she is a she's a pisces as well so just from sun sign compatibility they were always a great one to use romantic elizabeth taylor sun pisces sexy destructive passionate richard burton sun scorpio water signs so they have that elemental connection too but it is this really powerful cosmic rage that i just think seems to some seems to sum up their relationship really and a lot of it was you know i think she said you know has said afterward you know it was alcohol fueled you know they would have these terrible fights um and then dramatic getting back together um it's interesting that her that his moon is in um it's actually in Virgo, isn't it? His moon. Um, and so his moon is, a, they have a cosmic marriage on one side. So when you look at the charts, you'll see the sun, moon, sun, moon. They have a cosmic marriage, which is the conjunction. But then they also have an opposition <laughs> between their sun and moon, um, which is amazing. So they have this double thing going on of intense feeling at home with someone. It's like I've come home when you have a cosmic marriage, I've arrived home. Yeah, and I think there is that. I think there is a really deep pull to that person. I think you probably learn a lot about yourself and there's this deep pull, but they're not always, it's not always an easy or, you know, it's not the easy option. It's not the easy relationship. I think also, you know, just continuing on that theme, I mean, Elizabeth Taylor's, she's born on a Sun-Neptune opposition. She is a Pisces. So she was the great romantic. I think she she got married more times than Richard Burton. I think it was eight or something, wasn't it? And Pisces, that great romantic opposite Neptune, which is romance. But Neptune is also, you know, addiction too. Um, it's often a planet that's in uh, movie stars charts because it's glamour, it's Hollywood. But there is this kind of addictive tendency to Neptune as well. So, I mean, Richard Burton's moon in Virgo is on her Neptune as well. So you can see that they're this glamorous couple. Everybody wants to know about them. Everybody wants their story and, you know, to, to see them what's going on. But also there's this sort of slippery, slippery slope of drink down that slippery slope. But I think one of the things that we want to say about a cosmic marriage is, you know, if you see this, in charge don't make the mistake of thinking these people need to get married or even that it's a love thing necessarily because it's not necessarily about love it may people can be compatible um it can work much better as a kind of working relationship and we have a really good example of a working relationship where this synastry between these two charts it works beautifully um, but it hasn't dragged them into anything <laughs> with each other, as far as we know. Yeah, I think we can be quite clear on that. <laughs> so, yeah, the next example we've got is of, again, two actors, um, more of our generation, Kate Winslet, Leonardo DiCaprio, both extremely talented, both have won numerous awards. Um, and, of course, they met on Titanic. Titanic was the big movie. Um, uh, 19, I think it was 1997 it came out James Cameron directed it very long very epic three hours um, and they were star-crossed lovers Rose and Jack on the Titanic um, have you seen Titanic Christina I have I'm not going to sing sing that tune but I, I you know you can restrain me from hu from humming yeah. um, your daughter loves it <laughs> my daughter watched it recently and she sobbed through it she said, I didn't realize I was going to cry so much. <laughs> really? I just find, I, I, it kind of I made me, you know, it came out, my cold fish side came out. I, I, I didn't get it. Well, she, my daughter's a Libra like Kate Winslet, you know, and, and this is this is we're looking at now um, a cosmic marriage in Libra. What I have seen them in and I think is an incredibly great movie is Revolutionary Road, in which, again, they play a married couple. So weirdly, like our past, like our other example, they start off, they meet on this epic, huge film. And I mean, that movie has made so much money. Um, 
and it's been incredibly successful and people around the world love it. Um, and then they later on, they make this amazingly beautiful small film about a small marriage. And, um, and they're both great actors, of course. Um, but they have bring really bring a lot of power and they, they're better together. They're great together. And they have this cosmic marriage, which is again, like the other one we looked at, it's got an extra oomph to it. So you can see the reference chart is Leonardo's and the outside chart is Kate Winslet's and, um, Kate Winslet is a, is a Libra, um, Newman in Libra. So she, her son's at 11 and her moon's at 17. And Leonardo's moon is at 15 Libra. So it's right in between those, her, into her new moon. He's got that connection with her. Yeah. And they, they make a lovely couple on film. <laughs> I mean, they really do. I mean, the, the movie you were mentioning was Revolutionary Road is a great novel as well by Richard Yates and I think it was directed by Sam Mendes who was Kate Winslet's husband at the time um, and I think she really pushed for you know to to put the movie on about Revolutionary Road again kind of a tortuous story of a relationship it's a very tragic story um, but very much focused on the marriage the couple um, you know, and, and they just seem to gel as actors. They must sense that, that they work so well together as, you know, the star-crossed lovers in Titanic and then this married couple in Revolutionary Road. And hopefully they'll do more together. But it is, it's kind of a working relationship. And I think possibly, you know, when you're acting and you've got acting with someone who you share a cosmic marriage with, then that probably really does help you kind of get the other person. There's something that, you know, you can you can sort of see inside one another in a way that must help for for acting a relationship or a marriage. And also, if you're the audience, you believe that they're a couple. You know, it's that simple. And sometimes you watch a movie and you think those two would never be together. You watch these guys and you think, yeah, <laughs> I believe that. Um, and that's because of this cosmic marriage. And it shows a great working relationship. I mean, there are other cosmic marriages that we've, you know, they're well known. For example, um, the Queen and Charles, her son, had a cosmic marriage. Yeah. And, and I think just to say a bit more about that, that's it was the son's, um, the Queen's son at zero Taurus and Charles's moon at zero Taurus, but his moon was in the up at the peak of the chart in his career sector, showing the importance of his mum as well. But she hung on there, didn't she, for seventy years? Um, so, so kind of it like mummy, you know, mummy ruled. He had to wait for the passing um, to become king. So, yeah, it's a really powerful cosmic marriage between the between the two of them. Um, and there's that a legacy in Taurus as well. I was going to say, and we've just looked at another. Um, cosmic marriage in the Murdoch family, um, which is a double cosmic marriage between Rupert and his son, James. Again, very long-lived parent who is not letting go. And there's something also about the cosmic marriage, can, which can be a not letting go when maybe you should, you know, um, it, there's a kind of, I'll use that word glommed again, but there's a kind of glommed togetherness about it. Um, my own parents had a cosmic marriage and they were married a very long time. And it was not a particularly happy marriage for much of that time. Actually, it was quite painful. And theirs was in Leo. So as you can imagine, there was a huge amount of drama um, and um, narcissism. Um, whereas with this one, with uh, Leonardo and Kate, they are, you know, this is in Libra and Air Sign. It's about relationships, but it's also about, you know, talking things through, conversation, dialogue, literally dialogue. Um, and so I think cosmic marriages, you, it's really important to, to think about what the sign is. So we've had the Scorpio one, which is just, you know, Liz and uh, Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, which is quite tortured and scorpionic and was probably incredibly deep and passionate and sexy for them. And then this one between Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, which is about talking, you know, um, and about depicting a marriage. And then the one that you mentioned about the Queen and Charles is in Taurus, which is about staying steady, 
making things secure, keeping the nation steady. That's what she did. That was her job. Um, and he's, and he feels that, you know, he feels it. It's in Taurus. Um, and then my parents being sort of melodramatic. And in the Murdoch case, it's, it's on the Pisces Sagittarius, um, that square, which is a square that's about, a square that's ruled by the planet Jupiter which is a planet of expansion. So it's, yeah, it's not so straightforward or, you know, oh, we've got a cosmic marriage, everything's going to be happy ever after. And you need to dig a little deeper to see what sign it's in as well and what that's going to tell you about it, as Christina's so lovely, lovingly explained there for us. <laughs> Anything else we want to say about cosmic marriages? Who's in one? Let us know. How's it going? Yeah, how's it going? And And really, don't be... Um, I would say don't be seduced, you know, by a cosmic marriage, um, because it, it's one of those astrological phrases that people love. Oh, they've got a cosmic marriage. It's great. Well, is it? You have to ask the question. And it's not just, as with all sinistry, you know, it's how people are living their charts as well. Um, so would Taylor and Burton have been happier if they'd both been managed to get to an AA meeting, you know? Well, probably, but... <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of this episode of Astrology Talk Investigates. Thank you so much for listening. And please, for more astrology, do visit our websites. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Bye for now. Bye.